At the end of my last tutorial, I said that we would be concentrating on the cockpit again in this one, but I got carried away with the paint design, and in the process of making the paint schemes, I had so many things I wanted to add to what I had said in my last tutorial that I just decided to make another one of these tutorials. Quickly, before I go to Photoshop to show you all the stuff that I did, I just want to make you aware of these landing gear doors that have been added. The way you do that is you go to, here we had our gear locations, and here, a little further on, we have doors. And these determine the shapes of the doors. The front wheel has two doors, so there's two identical ones. You can copy them by using this command. And then you'll have to punch in the same data that you have for the position of each of these landing gear items. And then you have to figure out how much they rotate during retraction and extension of the landing gear. And here you can have different options will do different things. One more thing I wanted to show you is these little details that you can add later on. For these details, you can just use miscellaneous wings. You can go standard and then miscellaneous wings, and then you just enter the data for those kinds of things. Okay, now let's take a look at what I did texturing wise so far. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. I remember I told you that the best approach was to use a combination of synthetic graphics and photographic textures. Well, this is a perfect example of how that worked out. Some synthetic stuff is very hard to pull off, so you're best just taking a photograph. Other photographic stuff is not the right quality, is not the right angle, so you're best off making a synthetic part for that. It's essential to think about how light behaves around your plane. For example, here you see the nacelle has a sort of a oblique shadow going through it. The idea being the sun will be shining from somewhere around here and will create a shadow from the upper edge of the nose of this nacelle from these little wings here, as well as the shadow being thrown for directly from the horizontal stabilizer on the vertical stabilizer. And all these things are things I keep in mind when I make the libraries for these planes. And since Photoshop allows you to work with layers, I try to identify first all the parts that are unique to the aircraft, not to any paint scheme. I'm trying to stay away from painting the aircraft in the first run. In the meantime, I finished that uh, default paint scheme that I had showcased in my last video. It's the American Eagle. And a lot of these parts, in fact, most of these parts aren't photographic. A lot of this stuff is fonts, blurs, gradients, lines. There's a lot of artificial stuff going on here. But the advantage is we have a nice and crisp look. There's no artifacting going on around uh, major parts. I kind of try to avoid that stuff when I'm texturing a plane. Okay, so how does this look in Photoshop? Well, let's go to Photoshop. This is the generic texture. Let me go here through layer by layer. Glare effects. That's everything to do with lighting and glare. And these are the old familiar window guides. Windshield ledge. This was taken from a photograph. And then you see in the background there's a, a windshield that I took from a different photograph and pasted it in there. Next we have lines. You'll see these are the service cowls that the technicians open up to check the engine and work on it. These are the uh, thrust reversal flaps. And this right here is the fan assembly and the spinner. It's kind of hard to recognize what's going on here. Uh, I'll just open up an image that I got the idea from. Uh, here we see a whole bunch of screws around the spinner, and there's a little dimple in it here. So the idea was to create a spinner like this that is sort of glossy and reflective. I wanted it to look metallic. So that's why I did the gradient here. And then I just put some pixels in there to emulate those screws. I mean, if you look at the Plane Maker model, that's kind of what I accomplished with this. You see that horizon line there that sort of is supposed to simulate the gloss of those spinners. And then with other gradients, I managed to make sort of a radial looking main fan assembly. Uh, then the control surfaces, if you take a look at these wings here, then there's just generic stuff like, for example, the tires. Let's see what this hides and shows. Well, see, we have the doors here. We have the service compartment here. We have these details up front here, the air inlets, and all that stuff is under the generic stuff layer. And we have the cockpit window and photographic windows. I took these windows from the American Eagle photograph and just put some frames around it artificially, and the combination ends up looking pretty, pretty decent. Okay, so now we're getting to the American Eagle stuff. Here we have nice looking fonts. They're very crisp and clear. Here we had the original paint scheme of American Eagle. So all you do is you just try to emulate everything you see in the background there. So you end up with something really clean. And here you have the color scheme for this plane. Notice there's some kinks in here. They happen because you don't have much control in Plane Maker over how the library wraps itself around the 3D object. 
Now this gets different and better. It gets easier to work with textures when you're actually working in a dedicated 3D graphics program like Blender. There you have a lot more opportunities to tweak your 3D object that you're working with to match the texture rather than the other way around. Here, we're tweaking the texture like nobody's business to try to get it to wrap around the plane. And this is just a cumbersome way of working. There's a point at which it's definitely worth going over to a dedicated 3D graphics program. But I just thought I'd show you this so that you see sometimes you run into these kinds of things where you have to figure out, oh, how do I get rid of that kink in the library? It's this part back here that was kinked. So I tried to straighten that out in the Photoshop file. Next we have the uh, nacelles. Here you see, for example, that, that shadow casting that I told you about. It sometimes takes a bit of trial and error to figure out how to make these sorts of effects happen. And usually gradients, the gradient tool, uh, it's got different modes here that you can, for example, these fan blades I made with this mode here. It's the radial mode. And you just try to imagine where they all radiate out from. And then you make those with different opacity settings and stuff like that. That's Photoshop technique stuff. That's stuff that you best learn on dedicated, you know, there's lynda.com. There's tutorials that really concentrate on making you an amazing graphic artist with Photoshop. There's another texture that is being used by this plane. In your folder, you'll have paint and paint2.png. Paint2 is basically everything that didn't fit on the original plane. It gets slapped on a second PNG file and you can continue working on that. I resized it right away to 2048 by 2048 and then I repositioned this object so that I have more resolution to work with because the default position of this object there was not enough resolution to work with these fine lines would have shown up as totally pixelated rough looking lines I wanted these to look really sharp and razor thin so what you do in order to get an object in Plane Maker to map itself to the second texture so that you have more breathing room is you go here to Expert and then you go to Visual Texture Regions and this goes through all the parts in your plane and it determines which parts go where. The uh, miscellaneous bodies, which is this part here, it was originally mapped to this space, but that was crammed, especially on the horizontal level, and I would have not been able to fit this data in there effectively. So what I did is I said, okay, please remap this for me and go like this. I want to use this part of this PNG file to map across that body. So that's what really helped me get the high resolution look that we see in this plane. Okay, one more thing I want to try to cover in this tutorial and that is night textures. So you have a special menu here, show with day and night textures. And this particular texture, it's not finding any night textures, so it just slaps on a little bit of a darkness filter or something and makes the whole jet look a little bit darker. But we can have a little bit more control over that by actually creating night textures and I want to show you how that works. I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to paint it completely black. I'm just going to take the paint bucket tool, set it to black and paint the entire canvas black. Well let me reduce the opacity here so, so I can at least see a little bit what's happening. So next I'm going to see what it is that is most likely to be illuminated. So I know for example that there's lights normally shining on the logo on the vertical tail assembly. So what I would do is I would take the eraser tool, I would set it to sort of a brushy setting like that, and then I'm just gonna run it across here to make it look as if it's lit up. And I'm gonna do that here too. For the wingtips, I actually have to draw a boundary here so that I can erase something without affecting the, uh, the mask that covers the body part. And I go to the second texture and I do the same thing here. Here I go with the eraser tool again. I can actually scroll the opacity all the way back up to 100 because X-Plane will mix these two uh, libraries and will come up with something that looks decent in the simulator. So let's go ahead and save this. And for this paint scheme, what I need to do is I need to add an underscore LIT lit. So let's save that and let's save the other one as well as and change the name to underscore lit. And then we go back to Plane Maker and let's check out what the day and night textures look like. This is the night texture. I need some more tweaking, but you get the idea. We could also go and give the cockpit a nice and a reddish glow to make it look as though it's illuminated by the instrument panel. That's all I have time for for right now. If you want, you can sign up for my YouTube channel and that way you get uh, the tutorials more regularly.